Hey everyone, before I'm starting the video, I will just like to say sorry for my bad English at some times. This is like tall for being a Danish YouTuber for eight years. I hadn't had the, you know, the balls to go and try to actually make my English channel a reality before now. So, uh, well, I haven't had that much experience actually speaking English. Uh, I'm fluent in the understanding and writing English, but when it comes to spoken English, I haven't had much experience yet. So, sorry for that, and I hope you guys can manage with my sometimes a little bit broken English. But hey, it will get better over time. But hey, I will hope this video will be informative for you guys anyhow. Hey everybody! You might have seen my two Pokemon Go prank videos. And in these videos, I'm doing some things with Pokemon Go that's normally not possible, like I'm getting a 25 km egg, I am hatching a Moltres, and I am evolving a Ekans into a Mew. And these Pokemon have incredible stats. And while many of you have had the question on how did I actually manage to do these things, and in the video on how I made the Mew prank, I briefly explained that what I was exploiting were that the fact that the game is a client server application and well if we can intercept the messages between the client and the server we can uh, inject our own behavior into the application simply we have a proxy server running and this proxy server simply is listening for requests and responses and modifying them to fit its own needs using that way uh, we can for example uh, intercept the request for oh is one of our eggs hatched and simply sent the reply back, yep, that Pokemon just hatched from the egg, and then well, it will display that we just got the Moltres from the egg. But setting this whole process up isn't as simple. And especially now, as Pokemon Go has implemented certificate pinning, it has become a little bit more hard to, to actually do these things. And also the fact that you have to install Node.js, CoffeeScript and such, and you have to do this whole installation to actually be even begin to try to make these scripts. So in this video, I'm going to install Node.js, I'm going to install CoffeeScript, and I'm going to install the proxy server and briefly explain how these things are used together. I'm not going to show you like how are you going to make exactly my prank. I'm going to include the script I used, but my main focus here is actually letting you guys play with these things. It's a very, very useful learning tool to play with these things and to learn how these things actually communicate together. So in order to use the Pokemon Go Man in the Middle project, which is made by a Rasta Pastor, uh, what an awesome name. Um, in order to use this, you have to have a Node.js installed and CoffeeScript. And uh, also a lot of dependencies like um, Google Protobuffers, which, which is the protocol used by Pokemon Go to communicate. And all of these things are hard as shit to install on Windows. You can do it, but... It's a lot of hassle, you have to install very, very specific things, like even though you have installed Visual Studio, you still don't have all the tools you need to compile all things. So it's a lot easier to just use Linux inside a virtual machine. So here I'm running Debian inside of VMware. And I'm also, because of that, going to include a download link for the finished um, finished virtual machine so you don't have to use the go through the whole setup process if you don't want to but I can recommend you that you familiarize yourself with Linux uh, being familiar with installing things and um, generally man managing Linux it's a huge uh, nice skill to have before you begin to watch any of this you have to know one thing. The application has begun to use certificate pinning, which means that you need to have some kind of patch on your Pokemon Go installation in order to actually use the Man in the Middle project. Essentially, if you are an iPhone user, you need a jailbroken iPhone and need to use the patch, which I lend the mail, or how are you actually pronounce his name, you need to have that patch installed on your phone. If you don't have that patch, you cannot use 
a man in the middle proxy as the app would reject it. So that's kind of annoying. So I would really recommend you to recommend you to use an Android phone instead, as you can simply install the pre-patched version, which is also very nicely linked. And with that installed, you have to uninstall your existing app and allow unsigned sources though. When you have the pre-patched version, you are ready to use a man in the middle proxy. Let's begin. Well, in Linux, you know where we are going. We're going to the terminal. Everything is happening there on Linux. And this Linux distribution I have running here is Debian 8.5. And this is the OS boxes um, ready image. I didn't want to spend time installing my own image. So I simply just downloaded the image from OS boxes, which is kind of nice that they provide that. So let's go to root and the password is just osboxes.org. There we go, now we're rude. And now we just want to in start off by installing Node.js. And here I can recommend you searching for Node.js installed Debian because the standard package for Debian is uh, Node.js 0.1 and that's quite old. So uh, if we instead uh, use uh, this following command, we can make apt-get instead, oh my God, curl isn't installed even, wow. That's quite sad. <laughs> okay, now we have uh, the sources updated to instead use Node.js um, 4. So let's install Node.js. And you, you should be familiar with apt-get and how you can install packages using that command. That's very, very easy. So now we have 4.5 instead of 0 0.1, which is a little bit more, yeah, I think compatible with these things. Um, and also one thing we really want to install are build essentials. Great, now we have uh, Node.js installed and we also have build essentials. So uh, let's see if we are lucky. If we're very, very lucky, then well, all we have to do is actually type npm install Pokemon Go M E T M man in the middle. Let's see if we are that lucky that this installation simply just instantly gets what we're at, how this is going to work. And nope, we don't have git installed, so we also have to install that. Oh, dependencies are so amazing sometimes. So now we should have all the, the required dependencies for Pokemon Go Man in the Middle. Let's try to install it. There we go, it just downloaded the whole project for us, which is a very nice thing of Node.js that it's so easy to use a Node Package, ma package Manager. And um, well, now we simply are missing one thing, that's CoffeeScript, and that's only really because uh, Pokemon Ma Go Man in the Middle is written using CoffeeScript, but you can compile it if you want to ex externally, but I, recommend you to just install CoffeeScript. And now we should have the command coffee. Yup, we have. So now we're essentially done. Uh, we have actually installed everything we need in order to use the Pokemon Go Man Mill project. So now we can uh, change the directory into the node modules uh, directory and go into Pokemon Go Man in the Middle. And in this directory, we have a lot of examples, which shows some of the ways that you can use this to actually modify the behavior of the app. For example, one uh, very interesting one is to replace Pokemon.coffee file. It shows just how easy it is to modify these things. And well, it's a very, very simple script actually. Uh, all it does is set up the man in the middle proxy on port 8081. It then simply adds a response handler, which is simply saying, when you get a response for the get inventory request, then simply with the data, uh, try to look if this is an, there is an inventory delta, i.e. that something has changed in the inventory. And if then, well then simply modify every single Pokemon in order from, yeah, 151 to down so you can get the different Pokemon. Anyway, that might seem like a lot of gibberish to you and might seem like, how would I know which requests there are? are available and what values they are carrying. I, that, that, that seems very, very weird. 
Well, it's very, very simple, actually. There is a very nice project also on GitHub, which is known as Pogo Protos. And you can also here see all the different um, all the different uh, requests and, re and responses you can modify. And uh, you can also look into the project and you can look into the source and then you can see all the different, uh, b different things. Like you can see the inventory and look on how each uh, item are working and such. It's a little bit, it's not very user friendly um, at all. It, this is something you might have to sit down and play a little bit with. It took me also a little bit time to s make it work, but when you have it working, it's a lot of fun to try and play with these things. So let's just show that, that this is actually working and this isn't uh, uh, that how simple it is now to uh, use one of the scripts that you have. So let's go into the terminal and let's use the replace Pokemon example because that's one of the most uh, yeah, obvious examples. So let's use a replace Pokemon.coffee. Maybe we want to know one thing before I'm doing that, what, what our IP address is. And uh, this is my local address, so don't think you can like kill my internet connection using this. But this is my, rep my local address and uh, we have to set that up as my um, proxy server on my smartphone. So uh, what we're essentially going to do is going into uh, settings, Wi-Fi, select my Wi-Fi network and uh, change settings. You choose view advanced settings, proxy, choose manual, and then simply typing in the IP address and for the port, use the same port as uh, you have set up inside your, um, inside the script, which is in which is this in this case is uh, 8081. There's one last thing, one last annoying little thing. There's always more that we need to do. Well, as it is currently, the script would reject the server as it doesn't know, think it's a trusted server. So we have to go on our mobile browser to this URL. We have to go to HTTP and our IP address colon 8082 slash ca.crt. It will then download the file to your smartphone and you can then simply press the file and install it as a trusted certificate. After uh, all of this, you should be able to launch Pokemon Go and it should then run through your proxy server. Let's see if it's working. And yep, it's going through my uh, proxy server and you can see I suddenly have every single Pokemon. I think you can uh, see that I have like Articuno and sometimes it's not loading the first time, but well, essentially that shows that it works. And with all this done, you can now simply use the Pokemon Go man in the middle uh, library to do funny things like, for example, my script, I ran for my la latest prank with the 25 kilometer egg. I simply made uh, some variables like add egg uh, and if the egg has been added if I'm, and if the Pokemon has been hatched and such. And for example, I simply say, I'm, I'm simply when I'm getting a response for get inventory, I'm simply, if I'm having to add an egg, well, then I'm just looking inside the data and if I already have an egg, well, then I'm going to modify that egg to simply display 25 kilometers instead of like five or two. And that's how simple um, it actually was by to display a 25 kilometer egg, which makes it kind of silly that everybody, everybody is like complaining that, oh my God, there's no 25 kilometer eggs in the game. Uh, no shit, there's no eggs in the game. Uh, it's all dynamically settable. So if they wanted, they could release thousand kilometer x at any at any point of time so well yeah and um, I also then have another part which is simply saying if there already has been three updates that's because if you it's a lot easier to add them later I've noticed that it is to um, add them directly but uh, I'm simply adding the candy for my Moltres here where you can see them simply uh, adding to the data that it's going to send back to the app and then uh, modifying the inventory delta and uh, then pushing uh, some uh, an array to the inventory items 
and I'm simply setting the new modified timestamps and then in setting the new items to be that I have having some new candy for my Moltres. And then, yeah, you can add a new Pokemon like, hey, the new inventory has a new Pokemon in it and we can just set the data for the Pokemon, which is also why people have noticed that my Pokemon for some reason have a huge fucking... Uh, HP amount. That's simply because, hey, I chose that number because, hey, why the fuck not? And also why my creation creation time were a little off. And well, yeah, you know, that's basically how easy it is. And well, here we have my response handle for get hatched eggs. And uh, if I already haven't hatched an egg, well, then I'm simply just going to say that it was successful. I hatched the Pokemon and say that the Pokemon which hatched is the Pokemon to evolve and that's the same ID as my uh, Moltres. And well, then it's simply just uh, also saying, hey, you are awarded 500 experience, 500 candy for the Pokemon, and you were also awarded 5,000 Stardust. And well, that's how simple it was. And here we also see my evolve handle, which I didn't remove. And this is how I made it display Mew. So, this is essentially how easy these things are. And uh, you can also see, looking at this, that this isn't very hard. And you can do some funny things with this and maybe have a lot of fun with your friends. But there's also more hackish things you can do with these uh, scripts that yeah, are kind of cheating. You could, for example, re auto-release Riga Pokemon. This is also a very, very great example of what you can do with these things. Like this uh, script simply are uh, comparing a new Pokemon you're getting with all your old Pokemon. And well, if the new Pokemon you just catched are weaker than the ones you already have, then the old Pokemon, the, the new Pokemon is simply going to get released in such a way that you wouldn't ever have to release Pokemon again. Also, there's things like showing the IVs of the Pokemon directly in their names and also like skipping the evolve animation by simply uh, modifying the response and saying hey uh, yeah it failed you didn't uh, you didn't evolve the pokemon then the animation wouldn't be displayed but the server will still have evolved the pokemon and yeah also things like auto visiting the pokestops you're going through such that when you're actually just walking you will automatically use all the pokestops that's kind of cheaty ways to use the use the man in the mill proxy but well you can imagine there's a lot of things you can try and also one thing you have to remember this isn't modifying everything you cannot um like have a fake pokemon and like use it in battle and such it will always use what's on the server and the server will always decide what's really happening but you can do some trickery to make your life easier but anyway, I hope this little video sh showed you how I did this and how it's installed. And I'm going to make it a lot easier for you guys because I know that it wasn't that easy to follow what I was doing right now. That, that It might have been a little bit hard. So if you have VMware installed, I'm going to include the virtual machine I used such that you simply can run CoffeeScript and everything is installed from the beginning so it's very very easy for you to begin and play with these things so um yeah i hope my little rambling here helped you and if it did well then i hope it will be fun for you to play a little bit with pokemon go thanks for watching and see y'all later